Okay, this video is just a simple video on replacing the battery on the iPhone 3GS. Um, so, we're going to start by taking the bottom screws out. There's two of them. It's usually a Phillips. Actually, it's always a Phillips for these ones. A really small one. The only tools you're going to need are the Phillips screwdriver, a case opener tool, and you may not even need it, um, and a suction cup, which I'm going to use right now to remove the glass. Not the glass, but the whole front assembly comes off. Common mistake is people think they have to pry the back off. Uh, that's the worst mistake you can do. But uh, so once you've lifted it off, you've seen my uh, 3GS glass replacement video. So <coughs> the same steps. Pull this off. There's three connectors. You unplug them. Here's one here, and the LCD. And that one just came right out, but that's usually there's a third one here. You got to lift up the plastic. Um, one sec, I'm gonna see if the camera's focused properly, and it is. Now this phone has been worked on before, not by me. Half the screws are missing. Um, the plates covering the chips are missing. Um, this one just came in from a customer, and uh, they had it, I guess, at another shop. And they didn't put it back together properly. So hopefully the phone is good. Um, so I unplug all these connectors. There's one here for the charger port assembly area. There's one here for the headphone jack, power button, and then a little antenna one here. Also, unclip the camera from its mount. There's usually a screw there though. Okay. Now you remove the screws. Usually there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this one there seems to be a little less. Just don't get them confused. They're different size than the one that go on the outside. Take them all off here. Now, for this phone, I'm pretty much just going to test to see if it even works with a new battery. Um, it was a water damaged phone, but uh, even if your phone isn't water damaged or broken, it's the same process to change the battery. So, uh, normally you use a plastic tool to get that out. Don't, uh, don't yank on the motherboard with a metal tool. You don't know what you can get it broken in there. So you pull the motherboard out, set it aside, and here's the battery. Also you don't want to you don't want to poke the battery. There is acid and sulfur or whatever they have in there, battery acid. And there's your battery. You take that right out. So here's the new battery. Okay, so we're going to just set that in place here. Now, some batteries don't fit very well like they should. It's really annoying, so it depends where you buy it from. This one's supposed to be OEM, but I'm going to tell you one thing about this business. It's hard to find real OEM products, okay? And it's something you got to accept when you're working in this this industry. Just make sure that you get good quality parts. Don't buy the cheapest one on eBay cuz it most likely won't be the greatest. So, you got to make sure that that is well lined up because this is what's going to make contact with the motherboard right here. Now, this one was water damaged so I see a little bit corrosion and stuff on there. I'm just going to take this uh, brush and clean it up a little bit just to double make sure, to make sure it might not, you know, it might not work but uh, just cleaned it. And then you put the motherboard back in. Now to put the motherboard back in, put it in top first 
and then make sure that the corner here goes underneath the power button and lift up the connector watch for this antenna cable too so at the bottom you need the connector antenna cable and here too now this one's giving me a little trouble because the pin has been moved out of the way. See, this has to be up. Oh, trust me, it's usually not this hard. Make sure this antenna cable is not stuck underneath also. Lift it up. Get it out of there. And this one here. And then push down. Okay, make sure it's snug. Pop the camera in. <coughs> Excuse me. Pop all these connectors back in. This is the end. Um, another antenna plug here. Make sure it's in snug. Um, these ones, just wait a second until you put the screws in. So put all the screws back in. Now normally, what you do is don't fully screw it all in. First, put it back a couple screws. Put the screen back on and make sure it turns on. You don't want to put it all back together just to find out it doesn't work. But in this case, for the video, I'm going to screw it all back in. Anyway, all the screws that came with it anyways. Like I said, this one is missing some screws here. and When I'm done the video, I'll probably open it back up and put all the missing pieces in here. Um, to make it a complete iPhone 3GS. It is a 32 gig, so if it works, I'm going to refurbish it and the customer will be pleased about that. I will put that here, plug the antenna back in. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a cold. And make sure it clicks in. Now, make sure this ribbon goes in first, number three. It slides in. A lot of people struggle with this. Um, but you develop a knack for it. Then you clip the, the pin down and then you put the digitizer one in. Make sure it snaps nicely. And then the LCD. And snap it back together. Take off the suction cup. Put the screws in at the bottom. Nice and easy. So easy. Now we turn it on. Now I don't know if you can see but the Apple is coming on. So the battery works. What may not work in this phone is the backlight. It could be the LCD or it could be a motherboard component. That's not working. So we'll let it turn on. I'm going to plug in this charger and my computer detecting it and it has booted up as you can clearly see maybe not clearly but the backlight is dead so and the digitizer is not working so I'm going to be testing another screen on it very shortly um, oh, the digitizer worked so the digitizer is not working it's working but not the LCD so it might be the LCD or the backlight but that's the battery replacement on the 3GS Thanks for watching.